how to feed the world while protecting the planet, Halloween and food allergies, and do men eat more when they dine with women? For today, October 26, 2011, this is Food News Today. Good morning. We're now streaming both on our Supermarket Guru Facebook fan page and on foodnewstoday.com. Today's show is pre-recorded. So if you've got any thoughts or comments, just shoot me an email, phil at supermarketguru.com, or tweet me at Phil Lempert, or just send me a note and post it on Facebook. Food News Today is sponsored by ConAgra Foods, who shares with me the desire to provide the most current, interesting, and unbiased food news. Today's a very special anniversary. It's ours. Food News Today is one year old. A big thank you to all of you who have supported our show for the last year. We look forward to many, many more years to come, more great food news stories, and we're always looking for your input. It's now time for today's useless food history fun facts. Today is National Mince Meat Pie Day. Hmm. Well, for a more interesting fact, maybe we go back to the disco days of 1979 when the largest bluefish tuna was caught in Nova Scotia. Get this, it weighed 1,496 pounds. Speaking of big fish and our environment, an international team has crafted a plan to feed the world and to protect the planet. Can we feed more than 9 billion people anticipated to live on this planet in 2050 without destroying Earth's life support systems? In an article that appeared as the cover story in the October 20th print issue of Nature, a team of researchers from the US, Canada, Sweden, and Germany conclude that we can. And earlier this week, I interviewed Paul West, one of the authors of the study, to find out what we can be doing to lessen our impact and assist in the movement. So Paul, what did your research set out to do and what types of techniques did you use? So what we aimed to do was to figure out if we could meet the uh, food needs for a future population while at the same time sustaining the environment. And in order to do that, we used uh, a series of data on where a number of crops are planted and how much are, are the current yields, as well as using information about how those crops are managed in terms of, of fertilizers and irrigation. And so we then asked the question of well, if we were to increase existing crop yields around the world on existing lands, how much would we be able to do it? So what was your most significant finding? What we ended up finding was that um, we're able to um, probably increase uh, yields on existing lands for a variety of major crops by about 60%. Um, and so that is is good news and then we also identified a number of other major opportunities for increasing food availability around the world um, a number of which have uh, been identified by others as well we currently find that about forty percent of food is wasted and in a lot of developing countries that happens somewhere in between when the time crops are harvested and and when they end up um, at the market. Uh, in um, industrialized areas like in the US we find that uh, the majority of of wastage actually occurs either in the supermarkets or in our refrigerators. And what about global crops? Through our analysis we identified that about 35 percent of the total amount of food that is grown in terms of crops is allocated towards feed for beef and chicken and pork and other animals. And so having um, a shift in our diets uh, can have a major amount of influence on overall food that is available. Can you explain to me exactly what the five point plan is all about? Our five-point plan includes halting deforestation, which is one of the major sources of environmental degradation, closing the yield gaps of, of crops on existing lands, improving the efficiencies, uh, especially in terms of, of use of fertilizer and irrigation. And fourth is reducing waste 
And the fifth point is diet. 35% of all the crop tonnage that is grown is feed for animals. And if those crops were allocated as food, it would increase the amount of food in the supply chain for people. Thanks, Paul. It's a plan that all of us should follow. Our next story is a spooky one. It's about Halloween and food allergies. It can be said that most parents are affected in some way by food allergies, whether it's their child directly or their child's classmates. There's no escaping the dangers of food allergies. In fact, just 16% of our Supermarket Guru consumer panel says that they have no concern about food allergies in their household. With the spooky holiday just around the corner, we surveyed our consumer panel to find out how they were planning to deal with the upcoming parties and especially trick-or-treating and food allergies. One-third of consumers said they were purchasing Halloween candy as usual because for them, food allergies are not an issue. To the contrary, just over a quarter of consumers said they'll be purchasing a combination of regular and allergy-free candy in case they encounter a child that does have food allergies. Surprisingly enough, a similar amount said they would purchase only allergen-free candies. But there's a catch here. The majority of shoppers said they're not aware of allergy-free candies at all. And for that reason, 89% say they would like stores and manufacturers to make it clearer which candies are allergy-free, preferably directly on the package. So what are parents planning to do at Halloween parties? Well, 46% feel that schools and private parties should be careful to make sure allergen-free foods are provided and clearly designated. 40% feel that it's the parents and the food allergic child's responsibility themselves to make sure they do not consume foods that may be threatening. Only 13% feel common allergies should be banned from these parties and school functions. And here, come some pumpkin fun facts. Halloween is just around the corner, so get ready. Pumpkins can be found in different colors, obviously orange, but also green and white. Morton, Illinois is the pumpkin capital of the U.S., but there's a lot of debate on that topic. When you're at the pumpkin patch, choose pumpkins with a smooth, hard skin free of bruises or blemishes. And if you're buying canned pumpkin, look for pumpkin puree over sugar laden pumpkin pie filling. Use a vegetable peeler to remove the tough outer skin. And did you know pumpkins are actually in the same family as cucumbers and watermelons? And on that note, it's time to remember, the annual Supermarket Guru Halloween Costume Contest is here. All you have to do is post your picture of you dressed up as what else but food or a food-related costume on our Facebook fan page. Now, the best food costume will win an iPad, too. And speaking of the holiday season, we all know that after Halloween, the other holidays come rolling in. So do you notice that you eat more around your guy friends and around your girlfriends or vice versa? Well, a small observational study in the Journal of Applied Psychology found that eating choices and portion sizes vary depending on the gender of the people eating together. Now, maybe this doesn't surprise you, but women eat less, about 100 calories, when they're around men and more when they're around women. And when men eat with women, they also tend to load up their plates with more calories, an average of 200 more than when they're eating with the other guys. The participants in the study report that they did not consciously note the gender of their eating partner when filling up their plate. So there must be something subconscious at work here. The study suggests that both men and women are influenced by unconscious scripts about how to behave in each other's company. The point of the research was to get people to realize that context did matter. So now that you're aware that you could be unconsciously influenced in your dining choices, you can certainly make eating decisions more deliberate, especially over this holiday season. We discussed the listeria outbreak of cantaloupes last week, and I just wanted to share some fruit and vegetable washing suggestions from our Facebook page. Kim Janish says, use baking soda and water to scrub lemons. Gets the waxy stuff off. Christina Hudson says, brushes are okay, but I like to use the green scrubby pads. They're a bit too rough, 
brand new, but once they've been used and softened up a little bit, they're good for cleaning fruits and veggies that need a little extra work, especially on potatoes. To join this discussion and more, check out Supermarket Guru on Facebook. Well, that's our show today. Thanks for watching. Be sure to tweet me at Phil Lempert or visit our Supermarket Guru Facebook page and post your comments on any of today's stories. You can also send me an email directly, phil at supermarketguru.com. Have a terrific food week and thanks for watching.